Coaching or playing, the McConathy family is at the center of many great moments in our history. There's one proud papa sitting in the stands at Prather Coliseum for every home game. Well, it thrills me that, uh, and I was extremely thrilled when they chose. Well, Mike, was he didn't come here, he went to Tech, but he was a fantastic player. And uh, certainly I, I'm proud of him. He does a fantastic job of recruiting. and. And that's a father, but I, I'm telling the truth, the record will, will bear that out. Uh, yes, we come every game that he plays. It, it's got to be something since he's been here. And of course, I don't get involved. I sit over there and enjoy it. And I don't try to tell him how to coach. <laughs> um. Not in open anyway. <laughs> It's weird because I was so much younger that um, I never, I would only hear like fairy tales, almost what they were, because um, we're talking about 50, 60 years ago, my grandfather and my um, great uncles played and I heard about how successful my grandfather was here and um, how he ended up coming to Northwestern and hitchhiking his way over here. And then my Uncle George, who was actually considered to be the best of the bunch, he could have gone to some really high power schools, but um, my great great grandfather said, well Northwestern was good enough for your brothers, it'll be good enough for you too. This was in 1950. Hank Lee Prather was a legend at that time. And uh, he was the guy that recruited me to Northwestern. I'm from a little town in Florine, Louisiana. My dad was foreman of Louisiana Longleaf Lumber Company. And so therefore, uh, we were uh, small town people and uh, never been very far from home. And really, there wasn't a lot of places to go in that day and time. I did have a lot of scholarship offers like to Lafayette and Southeastern and uh, places of that nature. But I chose Northwestern because it was close to home and transportation was limited. In fact, between Natchitoches and Florine, there were still gravel roads in 1950. So the uh, place of, of uh, choosing to come to Northwestern and Coach Prather was really uh, an easy assignment for me. That was a, a vision of mine all my life. I had uh, some guys that I looked up to like Dick Brown, uh, former Northwestern great, and he went to Northwestern, but that was just a goal of mine when I was in the eighth grade to attend Northwestern. And I was very small, so I got optimistic and slept in a big bed and grew up to about six foot and, and was uh, able to accomplish my goal. Coach Cranford was the coach then, and actually Coach Thomas was the coach, and he came and uh, did the first recruit on me, recruiting. And uh, then Coach Cranford, after he took his place, he finished it off. So that's how I got here. Well, we were 30 miles away at a small school at Belmont, and Philip Haley, a cousin of mine, uh, was going to come and uh, they of course offered him a scholarship and they offered me one so we decided to come together and really then Northwestern was in our opinion the premier basketball school that we knew of and uh, so we were we were happy to come. It was close to home and uh I, it was Hild Coach Hildebrand's first year, and I was his, well, one of his first recruits. And I wanted to continue to play basketball, and I found a lot of friends I played, made friends that I played with after I got here that were from the high schools nearby. And so really, uh, really loved Northwestern. Well, I grew up out at Clarence, which is just uh, you know close by, uh, listening to Northwestern games on the radio. I didn't have a ride into town for every game, so I listened to them on the radio. Uh, a lot of the players became my heroes, uh, and so when I got offered a scholarship to Northwestern, I took it. Mike McConthe. Mike McConthe played two years for Coach Mike at uh, Bossier Parish Community College. I went to Airline High School. His wife was my freshman English teacher. Uh, I was probably the first student she ever sent to the office. And uh, 
it's kind of how we all got kind of close there, you know. And I went to Bipsy two years, played under him there. Then when he got the job, you know, it was no questions of where I was going after that. My recruitment ended kind of fast by all the other guys that were trying to get me to come to their places. One of the best experiences that I've ever had was coming to Natchitoches and uh, participating in the basketball program. A great experience as a student athlete. I, uh, uh, these guys are still good friends of mine. We had a, uh, I was kind of an outsider coming in. In fact, I think our starting lineup was, uh, I'm from Baton Rouge and the other four were from Sabine Parish. Uh, but they accepted me and had Coach Huey Cranford and uh, so it was a good experience and uh, uh, the best uh, was I met my wife uh, Peggy Hatch, Peggy Dawson was her name at the time and we were college sweethearts and then we got married and we've been married for 51 years so uh, there was a lot of good things that happened. Oh we played in the old gym and packed every night. <laughs> it just seemed like that they were sitting right on top of you. It gave you 10, 15 points home advantage every time. Those were great nights. Uh, you have to realize uh, when you when you squeeze them in and squeeze them in and squeeze them in, it makes for a great atmosphere. And everybody looked forward to a home basketball game. I can recall that uh, it seemed as if it was always full. And most of the football players uh, that, of course, we knew and, and we supported them and they supported us, uh, but they would sit on the opposite side of, uh, of course, where the students were sitting and they lined up that, that first row and they always cheered us on. And, and that was exciting. And, and uh, also, they would line up if we'd go to play tech, and uh, we would go pass through them, loading up on the bus to go to Ruston to play tech. So, uh, you know, they were very excited for us, as we were them. Well, my freshman year is the only year I played in the men's gym. Uh, that was a thrill to play where all the players that I had listened to on the radio played. But the Coliseum was built and uh, I played my sophomore, junior, and senior year in the Coliseum. And uh, I actually made two free throws and scored the first two points that were scored in the Coliseum. We got to tip, I believe it was southeastern Oklahoma we were playing. Got to tip and went down, went in for a layup, got fouled, made two free throws. And I can remember thinking when I was running back down the floor, that I scored the first two points and scored in the new, new Coliseum. So that, that was a thrill. It was great because we had a big fan base at the time, and like everyone knew your name. And they, when afterwards, if you didn't do something good, they would tell you about it. You know, it's like we was there with you, and they knew you. Was, it's just home feeling, and the fan base was great. We had some of the best fans in the world, and they treated you just like your brothers and sisters. So I would love to play here, and it's just that home feeling that you really love. We were not overloaded with talent, but we could we could scratch and you know we we had uh, Coach Cranford was the that was his first year coaching, and we had a uh, not many schools were doing it then, but we had a trap uh, defense, full court, half court, mm -hmm. and I guess we well. We did win a lot of games with that, you know. But the main thing we had, I believe, was conditioning. I could feel a player stronger than me, maybe to start with, but as the game got on a little bit, well, I could feel that I could get up higher, and I, you know, it was that that's, condition was a big thing with Coach Thomas, and that was a carryover through. Uh, Coach Cranford. I remember one time that McNeese beat us at, at their place. That was one year and they were ahead of us and they sat down on the floor on one end 
uh, we had never seen that before and it embarrassed us and of course they they went on and, and beat us and and uh, there's very little time left so the next year they came to Northwestern uh, we did the same to them and that that stuck in my mind that we got even with them. I don't think Coach Cranford wanted us to, but we did it anyway. <laughs> I'm a very emotional guy, very emotional. Uh, I feed off emotions. Sometimes my emotions got the better of me. Sometimes they didn't. But you know, to the, I made it interesting and I made it a, a sight for some fans to see some nights too, because they would come to see if Chris was going to act crazy or not. <laughs> you are. Uh, you earned uh, your share of teas during your time. Yeah, couldn't keep my mouth closed sometimes. <laughs> but you know, that, that happens sometimes. But I've learned as I got older, I might, should have, probably would have benefited the team a little bit better if I was quiet. But that would have changed you as a player though, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know if it would have necessarily changed me because I was going to give you everything I got. I just need to learn how to keep my mouth closed in situations. <laughs> <laughs> might have helped us better in the outcome. <laughs> We might have got that call. <laughs> During those days, you have to realize that when you would travel, you didn't have communications, you didn't have restaurants. Uh, we never called ahead for meals, so usually it was we'd pull in at a little restaurant and uh, they'd open cans and we would eat. And uh, the bus transportation was uh, slow and it was back roads and. Uh, going from here to southern Mississippi or South Alabama or somewhere, that was like an all-day trip. So uh, it, uh, those early days were entirely different. Well, we had a raggedy old diesel bus that, you know, smelled. And, you know, by the time you get to the game, sometimes you were half sick smelling the diesel fuel. <laughs> but uh, well, we didn't have quite as far to travel either because they were all, I guess Hammond was maybe the farthest in as far as uh, conference games. but. Uh, yeah, we, and early in my career, I actually went to some of the games in cars. The older you get, the more that you, you're, you're so thankful for Northwestern. It gave me the opportunity to meet all these players, and we still have a, a relationship, camaraderie that, uh, that we had back in, in college. And, it's like we've never been apart, uh, maybe a class period or two, but when we hook up, this same old, same old, and they still your friends, and uh, you look up to them, and, and you know those are the people that you can count on. Some place where, once you finish up, if you didn't make this big impact in life on things, they forget about you, you see? But right here, hey, it's still family, they know you. They don't forget you, whether you hadn't been back in years or every year, they loved you. It brings back old memories. You know, you, you look out at the young men on the floor and uh, you realize those old days are gone forever for you. But uh, you look back and, and think of some of the good times and, and know that they're having those same times. So it's, it's a good experience. It means a lot because those were some of my best playing years in my career because of the teammates and the family and the team that we had. It means a lot because, you know, like I said earlier, I can call any of those guys, whether I'm having a bad day or whatever, and talk to them and they're going to be there. Whether we're right next to each other or whatever, we're still brothers. That's truly what a family is, if someone can understand that I'm walking into something that's a lot bigger than just one or two people. And it's a lot bigger than the you know, 12, 13, 14 people and however many coaches you have on the staff. It's like you said when we started, it, it's about the family, it's about the tradition, it's about all the years that this thing goes back. It's bigger than just me. It's bigger than even if, um, it's, it's as big as the name on the jersey and everything that it stands for. And that's why it's so special. And I think that's why sports in general are special, but definitely sports here at Northwestern State were a whole lot of fun because it truly was my family that I was doing it with. And it had, on top of just being my brother that I played with and my dad that I played for, it was my 13, 14 brothers that I played with every single day, did everything with, you know, worked hard with, sweated with, Got, I mean, when things went bad, we all went bad. When things were great, it was all great. So I truly think that 
I don't know how other programs are ran, but I know this one is built around family and that when you come here, you're a part of this for the rest of your life and they always want you to be involved and that's something that is very special and I truly believe that's why the success has been able, Northwestern State's been as successful as it has, is because they've adopted those principles and stayed by them for many, many years.